syphilis syphilis is caused by trypanosoma pallidum it is a bacterial infection syphilis is also called as lewis so etiology the main etiology is sexual contact it occurs more exclusively by venereal contact and maternal transmission infection may transfer from mother to fetus drug user and predisposing factor mainly the etiology is main etiology is sexual contact classification primary syphilis 30 to 3 to 90 days after the exposure so primary syphilis secondary syphilis tertiary syphilis these are the main classification primary syphilis is 3 to 90 days after the exposure secondary syphilis is 4 to 10 weeks after first stage tertiary syphilis develop after latent stage here what is latent phase appears after second stage here there is no symptoms and signs present quaternary syphilis atypical malignant progression of tertiary neurosyphilis in immunocompromised hiv individuals is referred as quaternary syphilis and congenital syphilis secondary to fetal stage so these are the classification for the syphilis primary secondary tertiary quaternary what is latent and congenital syphilis so these are the classification here important point is what is latent phase in primary syphilis it occurs in 3 to 90 days after exposure site it occurs most frequently on penis in males and vulva or cervix in females recently occurrence on extra genital sites have increased as a result of increase in orogenital sex and increased contact among the infected homosexuals extra genital sites of involvement include fingers perianal region nipples lips tonsils and intraoral structures such as tongue and palate the important clinical significant feature is chancre in primary syphilis it is a slightly raised ulcerated non tender non bleeding firm block which is usually round indurated and with rolled raised edges its size varies from 5 mm to several cm mainly it is painless unless it is super infected maybe it causes some pain it disappears without therapy so it disappears without therapy after 10 days lymph node it is firm enlarged rubbery in consistency and non tender so there is no pain in primary syphilis what are the oral manifestations chancre on lips oral mucosa lateral surface of tongue soft palate tonsils area pharyngeal area and gingiva slightly painful size measures from 0.5 to 2 cm in diameter this is the example for chancre on the lips next moving on to secondary syphilis clinical features are it is spread by blood incubation period is 4 to 10 weeks symptoms is fever and generalized lymphadenopathy it is painless discrete and non adherent to the surrounding tissue and headache anorexia pain in joints and muscles in skin fine macular or papular rash alopecia in face cercinate lesions of face mucus patches it is small smooth erythematous areas condyloma latum it is a clinical feature in secondary syphilis gray is moist flat topped extra large opaque in lymph nodes generalized symmetrical enlargement patient enter into the latent phase without any symptoms after secondary syphilis patient enter into latent phase here there is no signs and symptoms so the clinical feature here is condyloma latum condyloma condyloma latum gray is moist flat topped extra large block and um, mucus patches these are the clinical important clinical features of secondary syphilis here also lymphadenopathy is present there is no pain in the lymph nodes in secondary syphilis what are the oral manifestations mucus patches present on the tongue buccal mucosa and lips slightly raised grayish white lesion surrounded by erythematous base snail track ulcers these are the important clinical feature confluence and collasi collasiscence of their 
glistening mucus patches it is painless sometimes it is painful and split papule or present it is highly infectious it is raised papular lesion developed at the commissure of the lip and with a fissure spreading the lip portion from the lower lip portion that is it is spreading from the upper lip portion to the lower lip portion split p appearance so it is split p appearance condylomalatum condylo ma what is condylomalatum flat silver gray wart like papule sometimes having ulcerative surface painless regionally lymphadenopathy is usually present so here the important point is mucus patches and snail track ulcers split p appearance condylomalatum how it look like flat silver gray wart like papule sometimes having ulcerative surface and it is painless these are the oral manifestations of secondary syphilis we have to understand that a uh, split p appearance here the mucus patches present on the upper lip mucosa and in the tongue these are the examples for secondary syphilis affecting the oral mucosa tertiary syphilis it may occur at any age from the third year up to patient's life gamma gamma is due to chronic destructive granulomatous process which occurs anywhere in the body gamma is the result of hypersensitivity reaction between the hypergic host and treponema so it occur at anywhere in the jaw but are more frequently on the palate mandible and tongue appearance solitary deep punched out mucosal ulcer and uh, there is difficulty in breathing and swallowing lutic glottis glot glossitis that is complete atrophy of the papilla so in tertiary syphilis neurosyphilis also appear tapes dorsalis is may also appear what is tapes dorsalis patient loses the positional sense of his lower extremities and walks with a slapping step and also cardiovascular syphilis and tertiary syphilis in hiv patient these are the example for punched out lesion present on the palate it is a tertiary syphilis example next moving on to congenital syphilis it is an infection of fetus established by the passage of spirochetes from mother through the placenta it got three diagnostic features called Hutchinson's trade in Hutchinson's trade include hypoplasia of permanent incisors and first molar eighth nerve deafness and intestinal keratitis oral manifestations included retarded root resorption of deciduous dentition spacing between the cuspid and the incisors molar occlusion that is open bite is also present so in congenital syphilis hutchinson's trade is a important clinical feature it include hyperplasia of permanent incisor and first molar eighth nerve deafness and intestinal keratitis here there are lot of oral manifestations in congenital syphilis included molar features crown of the first molar is irregular and enamel of the occlusal surface and occlusal third of the tooth appear to be arranged in agglomerate mass of globules rather than in well formed cusp so presence of mass of globules and screw driver shaped incisor constriction of crown toward the incisal edge and moon molar caraboli cusp moon molar also known as mulberry molars caraboli cusp is present what is caraboli cusp prominent accessory mesiolingual cusp of molar in jaw bones defective maxilla which is hyperplastic short with relative mandibular prognathism frontal bossing and saddle nose deformity occur so these are the important oral manifestations of congenital syphilis screw driver shaped incisor and moon molar and caraboli cusp we have to note the these easy clinical features in congenital syphilis
these are the example for screwdriver shaped incisor upper and lower there is construction toward the incisor incisor edge here the note the molars there is no developed cusp there is lot of globules appearance diagnosis of syphilis first we have to take the history of a sexually active person next dark field examination microscopy it is the most useful method for identifying spirochetes in primary occurred and occasionally secondary syphilis so in primary and secondary syphilis we have to see the dark field examination microscopy because trypanosoma pallidum is a mobile bacteria so it is not reliable of oral lesion since the normal flora contains non pathogenic trypanosoma which are difficult to distinguish from trypanosoma pallidum so next diagnostic aid is lesion biopsy histopathological examination of suspected lesion stained by silver impregnation technique is usual particularly when the organisms are few few in number as mean case of ter tertiary lesion so lesion biopsy is helpful in tertiary lesion for oral lesion this technique is of considerable value the third test is trypanosoma antigen test trypanosoma uh, test is of value in making a confirmatory diagnosis so if you if you want to confirm the syphilis then take trypanosoma antigen test if you want to know the efficacy of the therapy you have to take the non trypanosoma antigen test in non trypanosoma antigen test there is two uh, testers tester are available one is vd oral and another one is rpr vd oral is venereal disease research laboratory test and uh, rpr is rapid plasma reagent test in management antibiotics patient should be given benzathione penicillin 2.4 million units in im aqueous crystalline penicillin tetracycline hydrochloride 500 mg orally four times a day for 15 days patient who are allergic to penicillin erythromycin 500 mg by mouth four time a day for 15 days can be given trypanosoma pallidum disappear from infectious lesion within 24 hours of instituting therapy in follow up we have to repeat at the vd oral test at 1 3 6 9 12 18 24 and 24 months at the end of 24 month if vd oral is negative patient is said to be cured in prevention there is no dependable prophylactic measure other than sexual assistance with infected partner the use of prophylactic antibiotic locally is beneficial in pregnant women suspecting to exposure